Hello, this is HBO Scripto Corner for Thursday, September 13th, 2018. I know I'm a day late, but hey, that's okay. I'm going to get this out today anyway. I've had a toothache as of late, so it's been kind of delaying my, uh, my creative impulses. So, anyhow, we're going to get all right, right into the news, right into this video. So, as the late Heath Ledger said, as the Joker in the Dark Knight, and here we go. Lauren Coleman has been honoring cryptozoologists of the year for now 10 years, a decade. Actually, well, since 2000, <coughs> he's compiled an annual list of top cryptozoology stories of the year. But uh, in 2016, starting in 2016, uh, he began awarding a Golden Yeti to each honoree. And this is the award right here. Pretty cool looking, I have to say. Seth Breedlove last year. <clears throat> Carl Shukur the year before. Jeremy Ephraimson. Bill Munns in 2014. Brian Sykes 2013. Cliff Berrickman. Mark Murphy, Nuey Lynn, <clears throat> and Gab Gabrielle Gentile, and Andrea Marshall. Those are the winners in um, in 2000, uh, 2008 to 2000. 2018 was Anna, was Anna, Ke <coughs> Anna Dakaris. Now, um, I actually had some Cryptozoologist of the Year awards myself back in 2007. Lauren Coleman and Jeff Meldrum. And Cryptozoology Book of the Year was Mysterious America by Lauren Coleman. It was a bit of an unofficial thing, but people did vote on this, by the way. I had people vote on it. That was way back over a decade ago. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and thank you, Lauren, for including my uh, award in there. Yeah. So, this is pretty cool. But, you know, <clears throat> makes me wonder who's going to be the Cryptozoologist of the Year for 2019. We'll find out in about a year. Back ten years ago, in July of 2008, there was a very unique, shall we say, specimen found on the beach in New York, the New York area. It was found on an island. <clears throat> and Lauren Coleman coined the term for the body, or this, this corpse, the Montauk Monster. And it was a very strange looking creature. Uh, this is a sketch of it. Now, there were those who have said that it's just merely a what's the word I'm looking for a mangy raccoon hmm I don't know about that you, know, you take a closer look at the uh, this, this corpse it's very strange looking whatever it is actually Lauren says that it's a decomposing raccoon hmm Oh, well, that's very interesting. And this is the alleged creature. And nearly every serious examination did conclude it was indeed a decayed raccoon carcass. Look at that. Yikes. Looks kind of bizarre, but I mean, it's <clears throat> that looks. I mean, that that does look kind of strange. But I mean, you can see the hair right here for the fur. It 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 it, it just looks weird, is all, because it's decayed. But as you can see right here, this is what a raccoon skull looks like 
uh, without much hair on it. So that's what it is. Yeah. Very, very weird. Very strange. But indeed, it's just a uh, a corpse of a raccoon. It's just, uh, it, it's bizarre, but I tell you, it's very interesting nonetheless. I mean, maybe we thought for a brief shining moment we had another cryptid. But alas, it was not to be. More mundane explanation. Oh well, bear luck next time. Here's an event for those who are in the Pocatello, Idaho area. It won't be this weekend, but next weekend. Brandon Tennant is hosting the Pocatello Bigfoot Conference. And the two principal speakers will be this guy, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, and Finding Bigfoot's Cliff Barrickman. Also, there's going to be a guest appearance by author Becky Cook, who wrote, I thought, really two really interesting and excellent books, Bigfoot Lives in Idaho and Bigfoot Still Lives in Idaho. Now, I watched a recent... Uh, presentation by the late Dr. Grover Krantz, which is on YouTube, and he was asked about the possibility of these creatures living, especially in northern Idaho, and he said, yes, it's a very good, he said it was a very good uh, environment for them, that it was excellent for these creatures to live in. I mean, it's right next door to Washington State, and they don't recognize borders. So, but this will be September 21st, September 22nd at a place called The Warehouse. Home of the West Side Players at 1009 South 2nd Avenue in Pocatello, Idaho. And um, tickets are $35, which isn't bad. And they can be purchased through PayPal online. Uh, seating is limited to 120, so you better hurry before they're gone. So if you're in that area, or maybe you're planning just to maybe jaunt out to Pocatello, this would be a good little opportunity to uh, see a couple of uh, great Bigfooters speaking. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. It's coming again, the Texas Bigfoot Conference. It'll be held the weekend of October 19th and 20th. There's an article about Craig Woolheater and the conference. Craig also talks about his sighting, the sighting that he and his then girlfriend had. I believe that's the woman that he eventually married. Of course, they're no longer together, but hey. Uh, anyway, there'll be some great guests and great speakers at the Texas Bigfoot Conference this year. I can tell you that Dr. Jeff Meldrum and Bob Gimlin are going to be there. And um, <clears throat> this is a pretty cool article about the conference. There's going to be a special screening of American Monster Tour by Ken Gerhard and Lyle Blackburn. I mean, you may remember I talked about that last week. VIP tickets are going to be $75 for each day of the conference will include reserved seating, dinner, and presentations. Those planning to go should buy their tickets early, by the way, because the event sells out. Um, what I understand, I believe ticket sales are going to be ceased, are going to be stopped this Saturday. So if you haven't gotten your tickets by now, you've got about two more days. If you don't get the uh, if you don't get the uh, tickets between now and uh, Saturday, well, uh, sorry, better, better luck next year. Uh, but I'm going to have more information about the Texas Bigfoot Conference. Uh, matter of fact, that's going to be coming up here in a second. And this is the site where you can get tickets. And uh, the speakers are announced. I did, I did mention Bob Gimlin and Jeff Meldrum. Also, Lyle Blackburn, Ken Gerhard, Nick Redfern, and Shelley Covington, Montana. So, and Ken and Lyle are going to be <coughs> giving a special screening of American Monster Tour. The, so, that should be pretty exciting as well. 
All tickets are non-refundable, by the way. I just thought I'd let you know that. In case you were curious, yes, all tickets are non-refundable. So, uh, that's going to be in Jefferson, Texas. That'll be October 19th and 20th. Location, apparently, is going to be the Jefferson Tourism Visitor Center in Jefferson, Texas. So, looks pretty cool. Looks like some great speakers as well. Several local folks are going to be speaking there. Which I know that looks like that's going to be great. I wish I could go this year. Ah, uh, well, finances dictate that I can't. Well, that's okay. But, yeah, looks like a great time is going to be had by all. <clears throat> so... And you know, you guys know I'm going to put all the links in the description below. But, but wait, there's more. And I mean more crypto news. A fisherman in Michigan actually managed to get an interesting photo of what may be a juvenile Sasquatch. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see. Apparently, the creature, if that's what it is, that this is it right here. Kind of hard to see the face. You guys might be able to see it, see it better than I can. I don't know. This, uh... Hmm. I don't know what to make of this. Oh, here's a better... Here's a better shot of it. I think I see a face, and it looks like a gorilla mask or a Bigfoot mask. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a hoax. It just, it does. It looks like it's, it looks like it's been hoaxed. I don't know if it's, it was hoaxed by the fisherman, or if it was hoaxed by um, someone pulling a prank. I can't really tell if there's a, yeah, there does appear to be a face right here. Unless that's a brand, unless that's part of this branch right here, which is hard to tell. It's really hard, really difficult to tell if that's what that is. It really, it's it's hard to judge. It's really hard to judge. I can't really tell if if uh, if this is a face, like right here. I can't really. It's hard to determine. Maybe one of my sharp-eyed uh, viewers can tell me if that's a face or that's just part of this branch. But it's really difficult to tell. I can't really tell. But if that was the case, then half its face is missing. As you can see, as you, can see you would have more of a face right over here. So, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to say undecided on this one, now that I've had a closer look at it. I really don't know. I mean, it, it, it has all the earmarks of what appears to be a gorilla mask. Because of the shape. The shape looks like a gorilla mask, but it's really hard to tell. And, hmm, I don't know. I guess you guys can make up your own minds as to what this could be. If it's a real Sasquatch or if it's uh, a guy in a suit. Uh, my position is either way it's not going to do anything to solve the mystery. Only thing that will solve the mystery is somebody brings in a body. Grizzly as that sounds, that's what is going to have to happen. So, but intriguing photo nonetheless. Next story, it's not really a <coughs> cryptid story, but it's more of a cautionary tale. If you're out in the woods in Oregon, be careful. And don't go alone and don't go unarmed. An Oregon hiker that was found dead was likely killed by a cougar. It makes the first fatal attack by a wild cougar in Oregon and the second in the Pacific Northwest this year. Uh, search and rescue teams found the body of Diana Bober, 55, on Monday off a trail in the Mount Hood National Forest. Now, Todd and Diane Neese live sort of close to the Mount Hood National Forest. 
So this is practically right in their backyard. So again, be careful. Do not go alone. Do not go unarmed. There's all kinds of critters besides Bigfoot that can get you and kill you. I think anybody who is hiking alone in those woods is definitely asking for trouble. I mean, you're flirting with disaster. You really are. So please be careful. Please. Said her body had injuries consistent with a cougar attack. And the medical examiner actually ruled out the possibility that she was mauled after she died of another cause. So, yeah, be careful, guys. If you're out there looking for Sasquatch in cougar country, be careful. This next story is it's from last year, but I thought I would include it because I don't know if I talked about this last year on any of my HBM's Crypto Corner segments. If I did, forgive my indulgence. But if I didn't, you know, this is the story. The place where all the Bigfoot believers unite. Now this was about the 50th anniversary celebration of the Patterson Gimlin film which took place last year. Of course I was there. And it was of course tremendous. Uh, well, a little bit of controversy at the end, but uh, I wasn't involved with that. I didn't even know about it until the next day, so, yeah. So, uh, anyhow, I mean, this is a really interesting article. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good article. There's some good pictures in the article, a slideshow. Bigfoot Patterson Road. And that's a footprint cast from Cliff Berkman. There's Joycey Jean, Jean Romo, my good friend. Who now lives in North Carolina. There's Ellen, my good friend Ellen from Nebraska. I think Abe Del Rio was somewhere in one of these pictures as well. But there were several of us that were there. And this is uh, the Willow Creek Hotel. Uh, but you can see a little uh, Bigfoot crossing. I think that used to be a hotel one time. Here's the Bigfoot Motel. That's where I stayed. Kevin Morrison and Abe Del Rio and myself stayed there. Oops, wait a minute. Here's the Ohio Night Stalkers, Mike Feltner and Mike Miller at the Willow Creek China Flat Museum. And that's the Ace Hardware Building with the Bigfoot mural on the side of it. Look at this. This is some of the, uh, this is the Klamath River. There's Yams, Tom Yamarone, performing at the tribute uh, event on that Friday night. There's Abe, yeah, with his MNBRT hat on. You can see him from behind, but that's him. Piece of Bigfoot artwork auction off at the conference. I wish this page would uh, load so I can see, you can see all the. Uh, that's pretty much it, though. Isn't it? But a really good article, some really good pictures, and of course, that's going to be included in the description below, as you guys already know. Final few items I want to discuss are some Bigfoot documentaries. I call them the Big Three Canadian documentaries. This one, which was, I think, the first one that, that came into the public consciousness, was Sasquatch Odyssey, The Hunt for Bigfoot. This featured all four of the four horsemen of Sasquatchery. Peter Byrne, who is the only remaining living horseman. Rene DeHinden, John Green, and Dr. Grover Krantz. 
and it's one of my favorites. It's a great one. It's available on Amazon. It's available also um, at HancockHouse.com. You can order it from them. This is one of my favorite ones. And also the same producers behind Sasquatch Odyssey also produced the um, the, the, the series Killing Bigfoot for Destination America. So it was the Peter, Peter Von Puttkammer. So yeah, I mean this is pretty, but this is pretty cool. The um, it's one of my favorite documentaries. I mean it features all four of the main figures of Sasquatchery. So it's one of the it's one of, it's one of the best ones I think. It's one of the best documentaries. It's really not so much about Sasquatch. It's more about those who look for Sasquatch. And uh, you know, three of them are no longer with us, but one of them is still around. So if you haven't seen if you haven't seen it, why haven't you? I recommend checking it out. And even if you have seen it, maybe you can watch it again because it's great and it's tremendous. And then what I call the second Canadian Sasquatch documentary, Bigfoot's Reflection, which is also very well done. It featured three Johns in the Bigfoot field, John Kirk, John Bendernoggle, and John Green. Also had Dr. Robert Michael Pyle, had... Um, Bill Miller, Thomas Steenberg. This is another one you've got to see. I mean, this is one of my favorites. This is a really great one right here. And it's really about, uh, it's about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, but it's also about those who hunt for them. And it's really well done. A lot of location shots in and around uh, British Columbia. Oh, Rick Knoll is also in it. Uh, British Columbia, and I think they go. I think they were in Washington State for a few uh, segments as well. But yeah, definitely, this is another one you definitely want to see. If you have not done so, but hey, you gotta see this one. This one is one of my favorites. Um, it's, it's less than an hour long. Sasquatch Odyssey is a little bit over an hour, uh, but yeah, you you can you can breeze through it in no time. It's on Amazon. I think all three of them are on Amazon, as a matter of fact. So I would definitely recommend seeing uh, this one as well. Yeah. Watch them all and watch them all in, in in order. Watch all three of them in order because I'm about to get to the third one here in a second. The third Canadian Sasquatch documentary that I definitely recommend watching is The Unwanted Sasquatch. This one has Dr. Jeff Meldrum, Bill Miller, Thomas Steenberg, and John Green, and also Grover Krantz in archive footage. And it does a really great job of examining the uh, the mystery as a whole and there's things that Bill Miller brings up in it that I would have never thought of referring to the Patterson Gimlin film also referring to footprints Jeff Meldrum of course talks about the footprints he also talks about um, the PG film and some of the things surrounding it and the Allegations by Bob Hieronymus. But this is definitely one that I would also recommend. It's on Amazon. Like I say, all three of them are on Amazon. I think they're I think they stream I think they're streaming uh, Sasquatch Odyssey on Amazon. I think they've got all three of them streaming. So if you guys want to see them, if you want to go to Amazon, oh yeah. Watch all three of them back to back to back. I mean, they are tremendous. This is some of the best. This is some of the good stuff right here. You're looking for some Sasquatch documentaries? Maybe ones you haven't seen? This is one you got to see. This is a great one. 
the, the three Sasquatch documentaries for sure must see. No question about it. Finally, I want to talk about Dr. Jeff Meldrum and his page, his Facebook page. You guys can contact him on Facebook. Uh, he is one of our one of our uh, top uh, scientists and researchers. He also talks about the upcoming uh, event that he and uh, Cliff Berkman are going to be part of that I discussed earlier. And this looks very cool. And I think I'm going to share this to my Facebook wall. That will be in Pocatello, Idaho. But, uh, yeah, he's got a lot of stuff. A lot of his um, research stuff, some of his research stuff on his Facebook page. But also you go to uh, isu.edu slash rhi. The Reluctominoid Inquiry. That's where the majority of uh, the papers and PDFs that he's presented are uh, stored. So anyway, guys, that is it for this week. Um, a packed show, for sure. I had a lot of stuff to talk about. I found a lot of stuff to talk about. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys again, I mean, I can't thank you guys enough. I know I thank you guys all the time, and you guys hear me say thank you, thank you, thank you, but... I genuinely mean it. I genuinely mean it. It's because of you guys that I do this. I, and of course, I enjoy doing it. I have so much fun. And uh, sorry for the delay. Darn toothache. <laughs> but I'm, 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 I'm on the mend. I'm doing much better. And, um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to try and get back to this at regu on the regular day next week. It'll be Wednesday, I promise. Lord willing, if the creeks don't rise, it'll be next Wednesday. <laughs> I will have a new, I new will have, I will have a new one up. So, yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. Um, by the way, the software I'm using for the screen captures is called OCAM. It's O C A M. You guys are thinking about making videos for with screen capture? That's the best way to go. You can record, you can also audio, you can also make audio recordings with it. Not just uh, video, not just video, like screen captures. You can record games if you're, if you're a video game um, player. If you're a gamer and you want to upload your video to YouTube of your gameplay, this is good um, software to use. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, guys, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, y'all stay safe. Y'all stay dry if it's raining. Be careful, all of you on the East Coast, with uh, Hurricane Florence coming in. Thoughts and prayers go out. I hope that uh, there won't be any really anything really devastating that hits any of you guys. We'll keep you guys... I will send good juju and good thoughts. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. And y'all be good or be good at it. This is VHBM, Crypto Corner.